I woke up on an island off the coast of Seattle. I didn't know how I got there, or who I was, but I did seem to know everything else. There were things about me I didn't understand. The brand, being colorblind. And while my gifts provided answers for others, I still searched for my own. My name is John Doe. All right, John, now tell me what you see. I see nothing. Nothing. Hmm. All right, let's try something more specific. Tell me about your first day at school. I see nothing. How about summer? A vacation, swimming pools, clubhouses, lemonade. Feel the warmth of the summer sun, John. Can you feel it? Can you see it? Gray. Everything is gray. Okay, let's try something more recent. You're older, it's your 21st birthday. Tell me the first thing that pops into your mind. Nothing. Two years ago, New Year's Eve, 1999, the start of a new millennium. Nothing. One year ago. Nothing. Fine. When I clap my hands, you'll be awake, fully aware of your surroundings. And how do you feel now, Mr. Doe? Fantastic. When do we start? <laughs> I'm not sure that we do. You have no memories at all, not one. Did you try the neo-disassociative approach? The Zyg method? I tried it all. What about EMDR procedure, neuro-linguistic programming? How do you know so much about psychotherapy? I know so much about everything, except me. Have you any idea what it's like to wake up every morning and stare in the mirror at a guy you don't even know? And forget about quality relationship with the opposite sex? Because as soon as they see this, they can't help but wonder what planet you're from. Any idea what that's like? Uh. Here. Perhaps this will help. Xanax. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Nobody said it was, okay? Just take it easy, all right? We'll get somebody to look after you. Any chance of an ID on the body? Well, I'm guessing the magician's lovely assistant saw it in half. Have you found the rest of her yet? It's a clean sweep. Got nothing so far. Oh, some days this job. Mark, got anything? I got nightmares tonight. That count for anything? Give me a couple of hours. Emmy found a second sample on the victim. Perp's blood must have been on the murder weapon and got transferred when he sliced her. You were on the DNA? Exact match. Some guy we arrested for vagrancy 18 months ago, Daniel Bowen. You locate him? As luck would have it, Saybrook Clinic in Bellevue, self-admit local bar. He's our perp? According to modern science, conundrum is on the night of the murder, he was locked in his room. No way out. I was sure it's his DNA. Positive. And all this? Tight as a drum. 
Well, I guess you were right. We do have a magician on our hands. Tomato juice, one part egg yolk, one part Worcestershire sauce. Salt and pepper to taste. <clears throat> Bartender to boot. Hey, so what's in a Wall Street? Absinthe, vermouth, stoli. Absinthe was Hemingway and Van Gogh's favorite drink. They both committed suicide. That's uplifting. Bullfrog? Serve in a tall glass, ice, limeade, vodka. John Bonham of Led Zeppelin asphyxiated after 40 shots of vodka. <clears throat> all right, Mr. Morbid. I'm all ears. What got you so sour apple today? My whole life. It's a mess. My past is non-existent. No. Wise man once said, yesterday is not ours to recover, but tomorrow is ours to win or lose. LBJ, November 28, 1963. But George Santayana said in 1905, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. You know, I gotta go with the bar owner on this one, JD. Let's focus on making some new memories. Well, the best way I know to fashion a memory or two is good old healthy fornication. Uh, huh? okay. But, you know, a little crush isn't a bad idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Someone to go bowling with. Maybe beat at mini golf. 47 mini golf courses in Myrtle Beach alone. You know, enough. That's it, you desperately need some company. You're getting yourself a girlfriend. They grow in trees now, hmm? Just leave it to yours truly. You didn't hire me for nothing. Hey, detective. Hey, there you are. Hard man to find. You can say that again, uh, Detective Hayes. Digger. Oh, yeah. How's it going, officer? Good. Hey, you know, I flashed a badge for a spell in St. Louis. Is that right? Yeah. At least till they flashed one on me. They gave me six months in the joint. <clears throat> so, Mr. Know-it-all, ready to take that big brain for a spin? Yeah, you know, my brain wants to take a nap. <laughs> take a nap when you're dead. This one has all the makings of a real humdinger. Come on, I'll buy you a mocha frappuccino. Mocha Frappuccino. Sabre Clinic, founded three years ago by Dr. Matthew Jansen. Stanford Magna Cum Laude, National Psychiatrics Council Honorary 1996. Seriously, Doc. It's scary you even know something like that. Frank, can we not talk about what a freak I am today, <laughs> please? In case we like for a creep show, homicide lives in here. Blood DNA's all over the victim. What's the catch? An impossible one. Guy in two places at once. Go figure. No way. Dr. Jansen, his own blood was found on the victim. So what? Dan Bowen's not capable of murder. No? Well, how about telling us why he's in here? Officer, you ever heard of doctor-patient privilege? And you ever heard of the public health department and the first cousins of the building inspectors? Because I could have had a whole family out here by bed check. Doctor, I have Mr. Kilburn's test results and Mr. Herman's waiting. Do, do you have the slightest idea what I do? I bring in the cast-offs, the rejects, the undesirables. The traditional conservative psychiatry has totally failed. 
and I expunge from within them the buried and repressed memories, the personal demons that endlessly torment them. Good. Now I know what you do. <sighs> repressed memories. Dr. Jansen has developed a remarkable form of regression therapy to help unlock past traumas. Do you utilize hypnosis, mesmerism? No, no, hypnosis is just the beginning. Uh, mine's a transient pansensory response. Idiodynamic responses, or... I'd like to see Bowen. Forget it. He's midway through my treatment protocol. The guy's endured a lifetime of abuse at the hands of so-called caretakers. Now, questioning him about a crime he couldn't have committed will deep sex the progress we've I made. I wasn't asking. Court order's on its way. Yeah, I'm warning you, detective. You, you screw up my patient. Then what, you gonna analyze me to death? Hello? Don't tell me you buy into this voodoo. Of course not. Damn. Hey there. I'm Detective Hayes. This is Mr. Doe. What happened to your arms, Dan? Put your knife from the cafeteria. What'd you do with the knife? It's gone. Poof. Bad boy. Mm-hmm. Do you remember where you were Thursday night? Mm hmm Here. I'm always here. What are you writing? It's a story. About what? About the beginning. The end. Dan. Dan. Did you hurt somebody? Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. How? In my mind, I can go anywhere. Surveillance cameras and alarms give us nothing. No interrupts, no internal excess that night, no nothing. You find a knife that matches the murder weapon? Still searching. And I want to look at this Dr. Jansen, too. This guy's a little too slippery for my taste. Dorsiflexion weakness in the tibialis anterior. Extensor hallucis longus and extensor digitorum longus results in equinovarus deformity, sometimes referred to as stepage gait, but commonly known as foot drop. Did you notice the way he was walking? It would have been very hard for him to carry a body. Uh, yeah, hey, get Bowen for me. I'm taking him in for questions. You know, I don't think he did it. Oh, brother. Well, if he didn't do it, though, who did? He just said it. Brother. Identical twin, identical DNA. Look, we don't have Diddley on records for this guy. We don't even know if Dan is his real name. So what are the odds? 2.9%. Did you notice the way he was writing? 19.8% of twins are left-handed, compared to 9 for non-twins. You know, maybe I ought to be locked up in one of these rooms just for bringing you. So. We isolated 1,782 local birth records for twins from 1977 through 1980. Now, filtering out any of today's identifiable DMV hits... We're left with 212 unidentifiable births over the course of three years. Now, based on Dan's DNA sample, we know he's a B-positive blood type, which knocks out another 184, leaving us with 18 possible sets. Mm -hmm. Can you pass the hot sauce, please? Of the 18, we assumed at least half the nameless babies were put up for adoption. So, we accessed local and state agencies to see if we could find two simultaneous admittances that fit the timeline, and voila! An orphanage in Auburn. Two infants later given the names Daniel and Christopher. Christopher was an orphan until he turned 16 and changed his name to Beauregard. And presto, an old DMV record for Christopher Beauregard. Let me see that. 
Landlord gave us a work address. You two are not normal. Seriously. You terrify me. <laughs> well, come on already. Detective Hayes, 12th Precinct. Looking for a Christopher Beauregard. You can't talk to him. And why is that, ma'am? Well, because Chris, well, he's dead. Mm, nine months. Fabulous. One of them's locked up, no way out, and the other one's in a hole. No way out. What's the problem? Medical waste. Do you work for plastic surgeons, Polly? Cellulite, love handles. I'll be a whole new woman. So Christopher's been dead for nine months? Yep. Did he ever say anything about having a brother or a twin? I don't really know about that. We work together. Did they ever hold any grudges against anybody? No, I, I don't think so, no. No. Ever express any anger toward it? What's, what's this about? How come all the questions? Police matter. Thank you for your time, ma'am. Come on, let's hit it, Dom. Christopher isn't dead, is he, Polly? Interesting how you bend over at the waist to pick up that mop. Uh, Dom, the door is back this way. That's a male trait. The distance from your eyebrow to your hairline is over three inches. The average length for men. I... He's dead. Doe, excuse him. He's not much of a people person. I'm guessing if we took a peek inside your bathroom at home, we'd find a medicine chest full of uh, ethadrone acetate. Progesteronic compounds used by male to female, transsexual. No. no. What are you talking about? You're not Polly. You're Christopher. You can't. Christopher is dead. I, I cut him out. I, I cut him. No! No. Now, what do you make of this? One who could do it, but says she didn't. One who couldn't do it. We'll say anything we want. What is it? I don't know. It's just... I can tell you everything there is to know about the genetic physicality of twins. From their monozygotic chromosomes to their polygenic traits. But when I look in their eyes, I, I can't tell you what's inside any more than I can tell you what's inside me. What? What's inside your eyes? <sighs> Gotta run. I put in for search warrants on Polly's apartment and work locker. The good Dr. Jansen has a sheet. Arrested four years ago for threatening a clarinet teacher. His patient's clarinet teacher. Now, according to his statement, the teacher was jeopardizing his patient's well-being. And Jansen said he'd stick his head through a plate glass window if it continued. Was about to say the same thing to me when I was out there to talk to Bowen. Yeah, but how did our victim jeopardize Bowen's well-being? We don't even have a connection between the two of them I yet. I think we should watch him. Yeah, well, until we have a case, we should watch everyone. Late, late, late. So, I had to use all my new vile charms to get the company that organizes these speed dates to hold it here. Speed dates? I think <laughs> I better speed up. Oh, no, 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 no. Chill. Halo pressure. Besides, you're rich. That's half the battle. Look, all you gotta do is spend five minutes with each potential babe. 
What do I do? Um, talk, chat, lie, what everyone else does when they meet someone new. Look, at the end, you're going to write down the name of the two you dug most, and if either of them has you on their list, then you go on a real date, and maybe they'll get lucky. I also collect sugar spoons. You know the ones that I mean? The kind they sell in really cheesy tourist shops? You know the kind that I mean? Uh, yeah. Hey, did you know that there are 13,092 eating utensils in the White House? Really? <laughs> and we still didn't have our food. Uh, we were totally starving. I mean, another two minutes, and we probably would have eaten the table. What? So, what kind of hobbies do you have? Hobbies? Uh, uh, well, uh... Sometimes when I'm bored, I like to test Stephen Hawking's hypothesis on uh, quantum cosmology, M theory, and anthropic principle. Whatever. Popcorn, chips, just about any kind of junk food that you can think of. <laughs> <laughs> I like hot dogs. Spicy hot dogs. Love spicy hot dogs. Give me a Mariner's dog any day of the week. <laughs> so, John Doe? Odd name. Mm. My parents were always full of surprises. At least while I knew them. Oh no, did something happen to them? No. Uh, yes. Well, one way of putting it. You know, I, I. I don't really remember them. Oh, you poor thing. So, where'd you grow up? Twin Falls, Idaho. Population 34,469. You're kidding me. As of the last census. No, I mean TFH. You went there too? Wow, what are the odds? Roar, Bruins, roar. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Twin Falls Bruins fight song. <laughs> so, gosh, I wonder if we, like, ever passed each other on the street or something. Oh, doubtful. Uh, we moved. Oh. My dad got a job. Istanbul oil drilling. But I thought you said you didn't know your parents. So, spill it. How'd it go? Oh. Uh oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just trying to help. So, what'd you do? Go talk to Encyclopedia Britannica again. You did, didn't you? I didn't know what to say. Hint. Whatever they want to hear. You know, you have no idea what it's like to have zero personality. I mean, that girl. I had a connection for like three seconds. Never mind. third wife had no personality. We were married for four years. I've answered all your questions already. I'm not with the police, Dr. Jensen. Oh, then there's the door. Did you know Bowen had a twin? I've recently become aware of that, yes. And you didn't tell the police? It's irrelevant. He's a psychophysiological coper. It inflicts violence inward, never towards others. Your techniques. Are you employing Freudian psychoanalytics, forensic methodology? Hardly. I resurrect the repressed past, forcing the patient to relive the memories in order to confront them. Resurrect the past? How? Hey, if I spill all the dirty details, who's going to pay admission? Come see the show. Biofeedback, guided visualization. I mean, these haven't been proven to work for total memory loss. Quite the student of psychotherapy. Hobby. So, if you're not a detective, who are you? There's something about you. A yearning. What are you hiding, Mr. Doe? I have retrograde amnesia. You're kidding. No. Yeah. Uh, curious. What's your first memory? 
nothing. It's fascinating. You know, Mr. Doe, buried beneath the cranium, there is a long and winding path, a history filled with the echoes of those once known. Mother and father, sisters, brothers perhaps, girlfriends, a wife. The mine's a locked door. Don't you want the key? Why the concern? You suffer the consummate psychological ailment. I just want to prove I've got the consummate cure. Sensory deprivation chamber. How am I doing? Easy. Easy. You're in trusted hands. Now, relax. Deep breaths. Allow the sedative to take hold, gently rocking you into slumber. Don't fight it. Free yourself from the fear, the debilitating chains that constrain the mind. You're winding through a tunnel. A seemingly endless tunnel, one step at a time. Faster now, speeding into the far reaches of the subconscious. Faster. Faster. sessions. Yes, on infrared camera. That's all. The tape's gone. Brainwave activity. Memories. Where is he? Where's the tape? I don't know. I can't find it. Well, why the hell were you back at the puzzle house in the first place? I wanted to experience his therapy firsthand, better understand for the case. So this is about my case, or is this about you? Both. I got your Bowen's therapy tape. Well, fortunately for you, my alien friend, we already had a search warrant. Now look, I got half a damn corpse. I got Ringling Brothers in lockup, and now this? You shouldn't have been over there without me in the first place, John. Frank, there are things about me you don't understand. There are things about me I don't understand for no, that matter. You know what? I'm sick and tired of... <sighs> Hayes. Copy that. We got something. Let's go. So you found Yin's Yang. Nonetheless, she's been in a Ziploc. Fresh kill. Numero dos. Herp was kind enough to leave her purse behind. Ms. Angela Norton, West Seattle. I look for a connection. Yeah. Oh, and Mark, get on the physical. I want to know if we have any more of Bowen's mysteriously appearing DNA. At least we know Doc doesn't have much of an alibi. They cut me in half. 
It's okay. They came into my room and they caught me. Look at me. Who? Who caught you? The white. All white. What's white? It goes on and on like that. And they call that therapy? Well, I can't believe you locked yourself up in that cuckoo's coffin. What if he's talking about being cut in half from Polly? A missing piece, an integral part of him he knows nothing about. Believe me, I, I can understand. No doubt. You're one big missing piece yourself. So, Jansen is purging his patients' demons, exacting revenge on their behalf? Start running the second Vic. See if there's anything that links her to Looney Tune twins. I'm looking for a Dr. Jansen. No, no, Jansen. Well, listen, any blip on the radar screen, all right? I'll call you back. 1982, victim one worked at State Child Social Services Office. So we cross-referenced her with missing persons report in the last 72 hours. I guess where victim two, last seen wearing a checkered dress and blue heels, were 20 years ago. Child services, that's our connection. Now, the way I see it, Jansen's making a statement by cutting them in half. So maybe, just maybe, there's more to that statement. All right, go back to the source. 1982, child services. 1632, Amherst Boulevard. Abandoned building. Social services building. Where it all began. Detective, over here! Both victims served on an administrative board at child services 20 some odd years ago, made all the decisions about placement. So they split up the twins. But here's the kicker. There's a third administrator, Peter Drzezinski, Bremerton address. Just keeps getting better. Units headed over? As we speak. I didn't, I didn't do it. Dr. Jansen is now the main suspect. But the doctor would... We suspect he's been exacting revenge on the twins' behalf. What? I don't know what to talk to Look, there's a third potential victim camping at the Olympic National Forest. Police are searching for him in the Northwest Basin. But with this year's snowpack, I think he has to be in the Southeast Basin. Point is, we have to find him before Jansen does. Miss Miller, is there anything you can tell me anything at all as to where Dr. Jansen may have gone? No, I... I just don't know. Okay. Um, oh, uh, by the way, Bowen's being released today. I just wanted to let you know. What the... <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Doe. I'll see to it that he's looked after.
at 911, picking up a phone? To say what? Okay, I was wrong about the first two guys to do it, but the third was the lucky charm. Well, enlighten the weaker mind. How'd you know it was Miller? Ananichi, the rare hereditary trait passed from parent to child. When I spotted it on bone, I thought it was self-mutilation. It wasn't until I visited her at the clinic that I confirmed it. Ananichi, born without a fingernail. Wait a minute, so she's their mother? Man, old family full of loons. Mm, must have given them up as a kid, you know, and figured at least they'd have each other. She grows up, tracks him down, realizes what happened, goes mental herself, or she was already. Well, I beg serious questions for that nature versus nurture debate. On this case, neither. They lied. They ruined my children. They made my daddy cut himself. <laughs> cut, cut his own body. Well, they met that knife, didn't they? The very same knife. <laughs> and what about Dr. Jansen? Did he deserve to die, too? I didn't hurt Dr. Jansen. Was he on to you? I would never hurt Dr. Jensen. He tried to help my babies. He was so kind. Then where is he? Where did he go? Hey, cool. Where's the tape? <laughs> what the hell's the matter with you? You're about five seconds off giving some lawyer a technicality. I'm sorry, I just need to go home? Get some sleep? Yeah, I agree. Now, seriously, John, you are way too invested in this. I don't think she killed Jensen. What, she got a twin now, too? Gut feeling. She exhibited no change in eye contact, voice pitch, or any recognized giveaway of life. She chopped people in half and stuffed them in the shopping carts. Now, obviously, she's a little accomplished at the fine art of evil. Go home, Doug. Go home. I think they'll be very happy here, Mr. Doe. I see you've paid in advance for quite a number of years. Are you a relative or? No, just a friend. Love is blind and love is strong. By every measure. Love me little and love me long. Save some for the future. Some nice notes there, fingers. Electric parrot. Mm. Four parts pineapple juice, two parts rum, one part blue curacao. Mm. One more I know I don't like. I'll stump you one of these days, Einstein. I welcome it. Yeah? Well, another thing you might welcome. That pretty little dark-haired girl over there. You wouldn't even believe what it took to get her back in here. Hi again. Hi. 
again. Some piano player. Thanks. Comes naturally. So, John Doe, how about you tell me where you're really from? You know, I... I don't know. I have this, uh... Amnesia thing. Well, no baggage at least, right? <laughs> Clean slate. <laughs> so I guess every experience is a new experience. <laughs> <laughs>